Welcome to the Canadian Investors Course Session 9, the Investment Industry Products and Fees Commentary. Please note slide 2, Terms of Use and Disclaimer, which was read to you in full in the introduction. The job of a financial advisor is one of wearing many hats. They have, they have to concentrate on understanding and knowing about the investments that you might buy or that you own. They have to manage your your relationship and the relationship of the rest of their clients. It's a busy job. And for you, the investor, so much confusion. Let's look at some of the, the, the things we've spoken about before, starting with financial planners. There are three types of planners. There's the fee for plan planner, the product seller or restricted planner, typically an MFDA planner. And then there's the portfolio manager or advisor from the IROC firm. You can refer to section six and seven in uh, uh, referring, uh, regarding financial planning for more detail on this. And then the product sellers. There are proprietary product sellers and non-proprietary product sellers. The proprietary product sellers are the banks, trust companies, credit unions, some individual insurance companies, and some planning firms like Investors Group and, and again, some insurance companies in the planning area. And the non-proprietary product sellers typically have no internal mandate. Ironically, most of the large non-proprietary product sellers are owned by proprietary product sellers, i.e. the banks, and they compete with the bank for your money. Oh well, that's Canada. Anyway, proprietary product sellers, they sell the company's internal product. An example of this would be going to a bank, say Bank of Montreal, where you'd expect to find Bank of Montreal GICs. You probably would not expect to find TD or Scotiabank GICs at BMO, and if you went to TD or Scotiabank, you wouldn't probably find BMO GICs either. And typically that extends to other products they sell. So again, if you go to BMO, you're going to probably get BMO mutual funds, and if you go to Royal Bank, you're going to get Royal Bank mutual funds. They may have access to third-party products and uh, even third-party mutual funds, but it's unlikely that those are going to be the ones they're going to offer you. Now, let's look at non-proprietary product sellers. These are financial product sellers, mostly who are IROC licensed. The, these firms and or individuals don't have a, a financial a mandate to sell their own financial products. They may have some, but their, their mandate is to try and find the ones that are right for you. And typically there's no bias towards their own products versus someone else's. So they'll sell theirs and other people's products and interchange them at will based on uh, the viability of the products. They typically will not have an internal product mandate, perhaps with the exception of wrap accounts. So let's use the GIC example that we talked about before. A non-proprietary product seller would have access to a whole array of GICs, maybe 20 or more. And in fact, you can see the list, you can pick amongst them, you can put them any or all of them in your own account, which means that you have the convenience of rather than having to drive around to 20 different institutions, being able to put products from multiple institutions in your account, protecting that $100,000 cap and making sure that all your GICs have the full government guarantee on them. Then there are some independent, independent financial planners who are non-proprietary mutual fund GIC and or insurance sellers. So what are the guidelines you have to follow when you're thinking of it, uh, uh, when you're evaluating your existing advisor or considering a new one? <clears throat> Firstly, do I want choice? Is my advisor planner or planner restricted? Are they proprietary or non-proprietary? What kind of services do I want? What type of products do I need access to? Do I want access to a restricted list of products or do I want access to whatever I think I might need or my advisor thinks I might need? Do I need help with my investment decisions? So do I want advice? Do I want my fees hidden? Some people do, or would I prefer to see them all? Do I want transactional fees, i.e. commissions, or do I want a flat fee, for example, a fee-based account where basically it's all in? Do I want discretionary or non-discretionary management? Discretionary means my advisor is going to make the investment decisions for me and talk about them perhaps probably afterwards when we review the, the portfolio, or do I want non-discretionary management where I'm involved in the decisions? What's my advisor's style? Are they buy and hold or buy and rule? 
what experience does the advisor have? Are they brand new or have they got 20 years experience? <clears throat> does the advisor's investment style repertoire include true rules-based investing with buy and rule? So, bottom line for you, make good use of this site. Banks tend to be proprietary sellers, but they all own non-proprietary sellers, i.e. IROC investment firms. In many cases, there's internal competition for your money between the bank and the IROC firm to get around this bias. And after all, one would assume that they really do want what's best for you. You have to ask to be referred to their non-proprietary arm, which truly are full service IROC regulated financial advisors. Remember that not all advisors practice true rules based investing. You can learn more about this in session 15. So in the end, remember, this is your money. So do what's best for you. Go to the resources section of this website and obtain an investment professional selection guide that will help you decide which one best suits your needs. And then bring your questions and the guidelines with you when you're ready to invest. And when you want to talk to your existing advisor or find a new professional to work with. And by the way, remember CRM2, that's the client relationship model, Two is here. If you look at session eight commentary, I'll learn more about it. Thanks for listening.